Hey folks, um, so this is a quick overview of Nepal in 2015, which suffered um, a really horrendous earthquake. And um, I'm giving you this as your low income country case study. Uh, and it's really good if you can compare it to um, uh, Chile, which is the high income country. So just have that in the back of your mind. Now, if you, just like we've done in the other one, if you break your page down the middle, just draw a wavy line. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the impacts and we'll cover social, environmental, economic impacts. We'll look at the immediate responses over here. We'll do that in a minute. Um, and those are the first things in sort of the first 24 to 48 hours. What was done to kind of help. Okay, and we'll also look at the long term responses. And those, those can be years, and in this case it was uh, many years. Okay, so key information. Nepal, beautiful country. Um, if you're climbing Everest, you'll go there. Um, absolutely stunning, up in the area of the Himalayas. Um, and what happened was it had a 7.9 magnitude earthquake. Okay, so it's a big quake um, by any standards. And unfortunately, Nepal is a low-income country. It's full of culture. It's rich in really lovely people and wonderful place. But it is a lower-income country. Um, so it's actually, let's put it up here, it's 145th out of 187 for its Human Development Index ranking. So that's not just based on wealth, um, but it is largely. Um, and it looks at things like literacy rate and access to doctors. Um, so yeah, so it's a one of our lower income countries. Now it had a 7.9 magnitude quake. Staggering number of people died, okay, um, and were affected. Let's start with who was affected. Eight million. Eight million people were affected, um, and that's because it extended over quite a large area, and people not just in the city of Kathmandu but others out in the hillsides were affected as well. Um, 20,000 people uh, were injured. Okay, so needed hospital treatment or a doctor to see them. And this, this was really shocking. 9,000 people um, died. Okay, 9,000. So that's a really shocking death toll. And that brought its own issues as well. Now, all the usual things happen that happen with an earthquake. The ground shook, um, but because it was um, because it was near Everest, it also caused an avalanche, um, and it also caused a great deal of damage for the buildings. So, if we start by just we'll just draw some buildings now. They really were like this. Okay, they were on their sides, like collapsed, leaning. Um, crushed, crumbled, you know, there was so much debris. Okay, so we just draw some buildings and some cracks. It was just shocking, like a, like a pack of cards that had come crumbling down. Buildings were leaning on their sides. Um, and the cost of rebuilding was five billion dollars, okay? That was just a repair um, and rebuild. A really big number and that's a really big number when you're in a low-income country I know the cost in Chile was like 30 billion but the buildings were more expensive so um, really expensive economic cost but the social cost I think we can argue argue is you know, higher um, so let's get our mountains in there now so remember it's up in the Alps um, we'll draw a couple of mountains like that we can get some Snow on them. There we go. Um, so, at the time of the earthquake, there were people who were trying to reach the top of Everest. Um, every year, lots of people, many, many people go to base camp, and many people will go further up the mountain. Now, sadly, uh, even on Everest, there were deaths. Um, there were 19 people that had to be um, bagged up and, and taken down by helicopter because when it shook 
a huge kind of, um, you know, avalanche basically made its way down the mountain, avalanche, um, basically destroying, you know, everything in its path. There were, there were survivors, but it was quite, uh, quite big, quite a big and shocking one. Now, one of the reasons so many people died in Kathmandu and in the surrounding areas is because roads, it's going to draw a road like this, uh, roads were covered in landslides. So there were, if we just write the word landslides, there were rocks, um, rock falls as well, let's put rock falls, um, landslides. Basically, these rocks and the, these landslides would block the roads. So uh, it was really difficult to get to people and to get access to people and to support them and to give them medical care or food. People were trapped. People were uh, isolated in, the, in these hillside regions. Um, there was also, uh, if we draw um, a river, I'll just put that in frame. there was also river flooding. So the river flooding was caused again by the earthquake. So there's, and the avalanche, all of it together a really shocking state of affairs. Now, the difficulty wasn't just the earthquake, the difficulty was the wealth of the country and its responses. Now, they didn't have money to sort things out straight away like they did in Chile, so they had to rely, if we draw a big truck, um, okay. um, they had to rely on uh, what we call NGOs. Okay, now an NGO is a non governmental governmental organization such as as soon as I say this you'll go oh okay the Red Cross okay so it's like a charity they're not part of the government but they're there to help okay and what they did was they brought in supplies okay like lots of supplies um, things like uh, food shelter um, medical equipment, you know, you name it, they brought it. But it did take time, you know, it wasn't quick, it wasn't easy to get in quickly. But there were things like food, uh, medical, people as well, water, clean water. Um, so all those things were brought in just to basically help, help people survive. Um, but this was from other countries. You know, search and rescue teams as well. They came in from China, you know, um, and other nations because Nepal didn't have those kind of people available. And there was even um, a highly experienced search and rescue team from the UK, from Portsmouth, that went there. So they came from other countries, other nations. It was a huge, huge news and everybody you know, wanted to help and wanted to get involved. Now, longer term, okay, so this, this process of rebuild and recovery has taken a really, really long time. Um, the search and rescue efforts went on for a very, very long time. Um, let's start with uh, aid. I, I myself donated. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's something that you know everybody around the world could hear about and get involved with. So aid is money that's given from other nations, okay? So aid from other countries helped in repairing things and rebuilding. Because actually quite a good proportion of the economy comes from tourism. So they really needed to get back up and running so that they could keep uh, allowing visitors to come and stay and get involved, okay? So things like, um, you know, these, these access roads to remote villages were able to be repaired okay, and landslides cleared. Um, they had many, many search and rescue efforts. Now, I'm really bad at this. I don't know why I try and draw these. I'm going to try. So let's remember those mountains. Now, much of Nepal is hilly like this and there are remote villages and they were uh, they were getting dropped goods and things by I think the American Air Force got involved um, so there were all sorts of uh, aid efforts um, as well as search and rescue and this this went on for years this went on for a, a good amount of time 
Um, so we want to kind of draw. I'm really, really bad at this. I want to always say I'm really bad at this, but honestly, this is hard. Um, helicopter. Okay, maybe like this. Mm. I don't know. Let's do that. Uh, yeah. So helicopters. Let's put helicopter drops of food and medicine went on yeah for you know into the longer term you know weeks months and into the years later so there you go there's a quick uh, overview of Nepal and remember they might ask you about the responses they might ask you about the opportun um sorry not opportunities the impacts all the responses they could even get you to compare this to a high income country like Chile